so what's the update from you on the uh, state of the world? Uh, well, <laughs> pretty, it's pretty ghastly. I mean, a, a personal take, uh, it just at the moment, um, I've been trying to, uh, to judge how, how my book is doing in the world. And uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's not doing well, so well in Britain for some weird reason. It came out in, in the US as a paperback and has sold pretty well. Um, and uh, it's come out in, in Italy with, with a peer as the translator and it's doing very well. In Italy. And it's doing, uh, it's come out in Japan as well. So all told, it's sold 15,000 copies. That's in all different languages, which looks good, but actually isn't really what I was hoping for that it would become something that would 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 be pushed actually make a difference in in the way people were thinking you know i wasn't looking to sell huge numbers except of course the more you sell the more people are reading it but the main thing i wanted was to to be able to write another book and you know what uh, the, write the successor to this which i'd sort of envisage would be concerned with um uh, direct air capture and geoengineering and the pluses and minuses of that and what what we how we can and whether we should do those things and how how they might turn out given that we're highly unlikely to reduce our emissions fast enough so yeah you you have to uh, i think i'm getting beyond advertising this this book now and into well which is what what the book is about which is that with all the feedbacks we're having from from polar retreat with with the the global feedbacks that's doing it's it's enhancing warming so much that that we have to just stop thinking about trying to achieve this 2 degree target by co2 emissions alone because we're just not going to do it therefore we have to go to the next level which is um uh, both either either or both geoengineering or air cap direct air capture that's that's the um, what what we're forced to do what's your assessment of the state of the climate okay well first of all what i see is an acceleration of global warming um because for instance the the rate of rise of co2 in the atmosphere is unprecedented i mean we not only are we not reducing CO2 emissions to the point where CO2 is stabilizing, but the CO2 level is rising beyond exponentially. It's, it's going faster than it's ever gone before. So that, that's just not working. We have to, that the CO2 is, is going up much faster. And then there's the uh, extension, the, the extreme weather events, which suddenly has hit people in Europe. I mean, you've had them in the States for several years. And, but they seem to have started when the sea ice retreated in the summer for the first time to a level where there was a lot of open water. And then that was about 2005, 2006. And from then on, every winter, there's been extreme weather events where the, 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 these big lobes in the jet stream have led to zones where there's very extreme warmth and, ex and zones with extreme cold. And we haven't really have that in Europe. I mean, they, that's been in the States, different zones of the, of the US. But in Europe, we've just had normal stuff. But this year, we've had some really extreme weather events right through this, this spring. Um, and in fact, we're still in one. So we've had uh, things that you're used to in the States, but in Europe, they're not used to that. That is, and they call it the beast from the east. That is, blame the Russians for it. But in fact, it's simply the the the, the curvature of the of the jet stream giving us extremely cold weather. While actually, when you go right up north, you've got extremely warm weather, like the the North Pole and and the the, the region north of, of Alaska, north north of Siberia was about 20 to 30 degrees warmer than average, which is extremely warm. So we're, we're having above, in fact, above zero temperatures in February. So those are absolutely bizarre results and, and, and even very 
standard climatologists would say this is, these are bizarre results. So I think that the extreme, um, the, these extreme events are getting, now they're hitting Europe as well as the US, are getting to be so prevalent that we can't ever expect to have a stable climate again in mid-northern latitudes. Um, and that, that really will get up people's noses, I think, more than, than just having a warmer climate or because it's the uncertainty of, of not knowing whether you're going to have an extremely warm spell or an incredibly cold spell at a time when you're not expecting it. That's, that's, that's really creates a sense of uncertainty and, and exhaustion. I mean, I've, I've been personally feeling very exhausted ever since January when I left uh, California because there hasn't been a decent day's weather since then until now. And uh, that happens, that's happening to everybody in Europe. So everybody in Europe's feeling totally pissed off. And that, that's a lot of people. Um, yeah. when, when you say there hasn't been a, a, a day's good weather, what are you talking about? What is the dominant weather there? Um, the dominant weather is cold. Um, uh, there's been snow at times when normally it's springtime, uh, extreme cold winds. Uh, it's really Arctic weather uh, coming down, affecting the whole of Europe, and it's affected southern Italy. And I mean, I was in Italy a lot of the times. It was colder than it is in Britain. And uh, so, and we had snow in southern Italy, for instance. Um, what, what I'm showing right now is a polar projection. Okay, so there's the North Pole. I've learned to set this so that we're up there in the polar, in the Arctic jet stream. So that's the Arctic jet stream. Mm, right. Now, it used to be that this Arctic jet stream, correct me if I'm wrong, was kind of more or less a tight, tighter circle around. Mm the uh the arctic uh, now if you take a look it's sweeping down into florida i mean here here is the united states and we've got arctic jet streams sweeping all the way through the uh, the mid-atlantic states down to florida in the u.s in europe uh, let's take a look at europe kind of looks like uh I said, Ireland is getting a little bit whipped by it. And then there's this band of, of pink that's going down the boot of Italy. Well, certainly the, the fear um, from these kind of disturbances is that, that the, either the extreme heat or extreme cold that comes from these, these uh, um, jet stream lobes is giving um, a, an impact on food production in mid-northern latitudes so because the, it's, it's we're looking at sort of 40, 50, 60 north, where you're getting either cold weather where it should be warmer or warm weather where it should be colder. And those are the latitudes where most of the planet's food production takes place. It's banned across uh, Midwest of US, Europe, into the uh, Ukraine and, and Asia. Um, so the, the, the band that you're talking about, if I rotate this slightly, the band that you're talking about is right through here, okay? So the, the, the mid-latitudes of the United States, the mid-latitudes of Europe, those are all getting either very cold weather or unseasonably warm weather in places. Well, you can see the effect, uh, even uh, not being a, an agronomist, <laughs> but um, in, in mid, 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 Middle Italy where I've been working, the last few month or two, there's no, no sign that spring is starting. It's it's so cold and uh, and snowy, and same with Britain. There's uh, normally in in mid April, we're into or early April, we're into springtime. Leaves on the trees and people feeling happy, but there's it's still really winter. There's there's no leaves at all. So the whole spring has been delayed and that means again the growth growing season has been delayed and um, if again there's another outbreak of cold you could start the growing season and then it could be stopped and that would have it would damage crops so you can see how the uh, the uh, what one thinks of as a, a reliable 
um, year-to-year variation in, in crop production could be really disrupted and poss- probably is this year. Um, so as well as the problem with not being able to produce enough food for a growing population anyway, we've got the problem of not being able to produce enough food if you have big disruptions due to weather events. Okay, and you see that disruption happening in, from your experience in, in Europe and in Italy in particular? Well, yes, certainly in Italy. And every, again, everybody in Italy, because it's a very agricultural region I live in uh, there and on the, uh, in the Marche, which is sort of very uh, uh, an area on the slopes of the Adriatic where agriculture is, is it's agricultural rather than industrial. And uh, it's very mu- people are very much concerned about this delay in springtime if you were going to speak to these people in italy who don't get it who see the effects of climate change but don't get it how would you explain it to them well in those terms in fact i have been doing so because i i teach a a, a master's course in in italy at ancona university so i can try out everything i want to say on the students and uh, they certainly do respond to this question of 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 um, weather events and weather anomalies and the fact that if you uh, the sort of well-known graph where it, if you look at um, sea ice retreat and then you look at global food prices that they that they're correlated and then the, the extreme highs of global food prices correspond to civil unrest in in poverty stricken countries and so you've got a you've got a a kind of question of uh, peace and war coming into it as well.